Sabrina. Known as both the master and mistress of psychic-type Pokémon, she serves as the gym leader of the Saffron City Gym in Kanto. Sabrina is definitely among the most intriguing trainers in the entire Pokémon world, perhaps most notably because she appears to have psychic powers. In the original game, Sabrina tells us that she discovered these powers as a kid when she bent a spoon with her mind. She also frequently tells trainers that she foresaw their arrival and knows what the outcome of their battle will be. Although this power has failed her on two separate occasions, when the Gen 1 and Gen 2 protagonists faced her. Nonetheless, these psychic powers are said to be quite dependable when it comes to mentally communicating with her Pokémon during battle, causing her to be a formidable challenge. As a person, Sabrina is characterized by many contradictions. On the one hand, she claims that she does not enjoy battling, yet of course, she serves as a gym leader. When speaking to the Gen 2 protagonist via the Pokegear, she even expresses disappointment that there are other gym leaders out there who are stronger than her. Further to that, at some point in the past, she shut down a rival fighting-type gym in Saffron, now known as the Fighting dojo by ruthlessly using her type advantage in battle to defeat its members and strip the gym of its status. Earlier on, Sabrina was also quite emotionally reserved and dressed very conservatively, but she later sports far more casual outfits and even discusses abstract topics like love and freedom. Although it's not part of the main series canon, in the anime, these contradictions are reflected in the fact that we find out Sabrina's psychic powers cause her to nearly become emotionless and she only uses them for destructive purposes. Eventually, the emotions she turned off caused a psychological rift and developed into an alter ego, a younger version of herself who was all about having fun while her colder adult self sought nothing but power. From these observations, I think it's evident that throughout the games we see her in, Sabrina is also undergoing a period of self-development where she wrestles between her stringent psychic abilities and her more human side. Eventually, the protagonists help her to realize that the power of love is more powerful than her psychic powers, and she even gets to the point of expressing that she wishes to live more freely like we do, accepting both her will to develop a stronger bond with her Pokémon and to eagerly partake in battles just for fun. Despite the personal journey that she undergoes, Sabrina never loses her intimidating presence nor skill as a trainer. But how skilled is she exactly? It's time to figure out just how strong the Psychic Master really is and what her best possible team is by looking at all of Sabrina's appearances in the main series games. It's time to figure out her true power. The first time we meet Sabrina is of course in the first Pokemon games ever, Pokemon Red and Blue, when psychic types were quite overpowered in part due to the non-existence of Dark and Steel types at the time. Sabrina's reluctance to battle is very evident in the absolutely maddening teleportation puzzle that we have to go through in order to challenge her in the first place. Once we finally do get to battle her, Sabrina begins with a level 38 Kadabra, followed by a level 37 Mr. Mime, a level 38 Venomoth, which ironically enough isn't even a psychic type, and a level 43 Alakazam. It's worthy to note that in the Red and Blue remakes, Fire Red and Leaf Green, Sabrina has the same team at the same levels but with slightly adjusted movesets. In Gen 1's third version game, Pokemon Yellow, Sabrina has a very interesting team that's more powerful than in Red and Blue. This time around, she has a level 50 Abra, Kadabra, and Alakazam, which prove as quite a challenge, especially with the latter two having stab Psychic and Recover for healing capabilities. The next time we encounter Sabrina is three years later in Pokemon Gold, Silver, and Crystal, where the protagonist, either Ethan or Chris, decides to challenge the Kanto gym leaders after having defeated all of the gym leaders in Johto. Around the time that Red challenges her, Sabrina had a vision of us battling her three years later, and that time has come. In this battle, Sabrina starts off with a brand brand new level 46 Espeon, followed by her now level 46 Mr. Mime and her Alakazam now at level 48. Sabrina can next be found in the Gold and Silver remakes Hard Gold and Soul Silver, where we can actually battle her on two separate occasions unlike in Gold and Silver. The first is under similar circumstances as the originals, where we challenge her for the Marsh Badge, although she's become a bit stronger since then. She's got the same three Pokémon as in that challenge, but they're all seven levels higher, with her Espeon and Mr. Mime now at level 53, and her Alakazam now at level 55. Her team also has some upgraded movesets with, for instance, Calm Mind and Shadow Ball on the Espeon, Light Screen on the Mr. Mime, and Energy Ball on the Alakazam. Heart Gold and Soul Silver also gave us the brand new ability to rematch Sabrina after we've collected all 16 gym badges. If the player goes to Olivine City Harbor on Friday nights, Sabrina is found near the SS Aqua, where she'll give you her Pokegear phone number. If you call her on a Sunday noon, she'll arrange a rematch at the Fighting Dojo. To be honest, I'm surprised they let her in. 
In this rematch, Sabrina has quite a powerful team with three brand new team members, and it's also her first full team of six Pokemon. Sabrina begins with her now level 60 Alexam, followed by her Espeon now at level 58, her Mr. Mime now at level 56, a brand new Jinx at level 54, a new Wobbuffet at level 53, and a new Gallade at level 53 as well. Her whole team has some very impressive movesets too. The second last time we see Sabrina in the main series is in Pokemon Black 2 and White 2, where it seems she has finally accepted her love of battling since she decides to participate in the Pokemon World Tournament. Sabrina is able to be battled in three different tournaments during the event, including one that most people don't even know exists. This is where we truly begin to understand the extent of not only her power, but the depth of her Pokemon variety. As always, the Pokemon World Tournament automatically sets all Pokemon to level 50, but we can get a good idea of new additions to Sabrina's collection since the events of Gen 4, and how competitively viable her Pokemon have become. Sabrina also has some great competitively viable movesets and items on her Pokemon. In the Kanto Leaders Tournament, we see two new Pokemon from Sabrina. She has her Alakazam, a brand new Hypno, Mr. Mime, a brand new Slowking, Espeon, and her Jinx. In the Type Expert and World Leaders tournaments, she has three more new Pokemon. We see her rotate between her Alakazam, a brand new Metagross, a new Executor, her Slowking, her Espeon, and finally, a brand new Sigilyph, which is her first Gen 5 Pokemon. Now in 2012, there was an extra downloadable tournament mode through Nintendo Wi-Fi that was exclusive to Japanese and Korean games. This tournament mode is called the Battle Between Legendary Pokemon and features new teams for four gym leaders, one of whom is Sabrina. What she is revealed to have is absolutely groundbreaking. She has her Alakazam, Espeon, and Mewtwo. Yes, Mewtwo. The origins of this Mewtwo are unknown, but this changes everything when attempting to figure out Sabrina's true power. Sabrina is also found in a disguise or costume where she plays an unnamed character simply known as the Strange Lady, something which we would have never expected from her in the earlier games. When battled, she has a level 15 Woobat and a level 20 Swoobat, which is kind of cool since it shows that Sigilyph isn't her only Gen 5 Pokemon. The final times we see Sabrina are in two separate battles in Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee, which are of course remakes of Pokemon Yellow. The first time we face her in these games is for the Marsh Badge, where she's got her level 43 Mr. Mime, Slowbro, and Jinx, along with her level 44 Alakazam. However, unlike in the original game, Sabrina can be rematched in Let's Go, where she's become very powerful and some of her Pokemon are at the highest level we've ever seen them. In this rematch, she has a level 56 Mr. Mime, Jinx, Slowbro, and Hypno, along with her Alakazam at level 57. After we defeat her, she says, There was once a time when I was shocked that I lost to you. That feeling is gone now. It's been replaced with a desire to grow strong and live freely as you do. It's time for the moment we've all been waiting for. Using all of her appearances in the main series Pokemon games, let's construct Sabrina's best possible team. The first and most obvious choice for Sabrina's team is her Mewtwo from the Pokemon Black 2 and White 2 Battle Between Legendary Pokemon World Tournament Team. Now her Mewtwo is automatically set to level 50 in the tournament, however it does have the move Psy Strike, which Mewtwo can only learn in Gen 5 or earlier at level 100, but there were a few events that distributed Mewtwo with Psy Strike at level 70, so we'll safely say that that's the earliest it can learn the move, meaning Sabrina's is at least at level 70. Mewtwo is quite obviously in the uber tier of competitive battling, which is the very best tier. With unbelievable stats and great moves in Sabrina's care like Stab Psy Strike along with Shadow Ball, Aura Sphere, and Flamethrower for coverage, this is truly a terrifying member of her team that any opposition must thoroughly prepare for. The second pick is one that is definitely less obvious, despite it actually being another Pokemon in the same competitive tier as Mewtwo. Sabrina's Wobbuffet from her Heart Gold and Soul Silver rematch team, which is at level 53. But we can probably assume that she's leveled it up at least a little bit since then. The reason Sabrina's Wobbuffet is so good is actually that it has the Shadow Tag ability, which is so broken that Wobbuffet with this ability are banned to the Uber tier with the likes of Mewtwo. Shadow Tag prevents the opponent from switching out whenever Wobbuffet is on the field meaning you can trap any Pokemon you want and it can't escape. Sabrina also has the same moveset on this thing that is still used by competitive players today even at the end of Gen 7, with Counter, Mirror Coat, Destiny Bond, and Encore. The third pick is going to go to Sabrina's signature Pokemon, her Alakazam, from her Heart Gold and Soul Silver rematch team, which is at level 60. 
Alakazam is currently in the UUBL tier, meaning it's banned from underused, but doesn't quite make the overused tier. Alakazam makes a great special sweeper with moves that Sabrina has on it like Stab Psychic and Psy Shock, along with coverage moves like Focus Blast, Shadow Ball, Energy Ball, and Dazzling Gleam. Sabrina's next best team member is going to be her Espeon from her Black 2 and White 2 battle between legendary Pokemon World Tournament team, which is seen at level 58 at its highest in Gen 4. For the first and only time in this exclusive tournament, we actually see that her Espeon now has Magic Bounce, which is an amazing ability that bounces back to the opponent any hazard moves like Stealth Rock or Spikes, as well as any status-inducing moves. With amazing moves like Stab Psychic along with Calm Mind to raise its special attack and special defense and Baton Pass to perhaps pass these boosts on to another team member and coverage moves such as Shadow Ball and Signal Beam, Espeon has great overall utility on the team and provides some great synergy. The second last slot is going to go to Sabrina's Metagross from her Black 2 and White 2 Type Expert and World Leaders team. Now being in the World Tournament, Metagross is of course automatically set to level 50, but all of Sabrina's Pokemon that we know the level of that are in the tournament are all level 56 or higher without fail. So if she brought this thing to the biggest Pokemon tournament of all time, I think it's safe to assume it's somewhere within that range too. We'll say safely somewhere around level 56. Metagross is currently in the RU tier of competitive battling, but it's second in the entire tier in terms of usage. Now Sabrina actually runs a special attack variant given its moveset, but Metagross does learn Stab Meteor Mash, Stab Priority Bullet Punch, and Stab Zen Headbutt by level up all before level 50, so it could very well run those moves if Sabrina just used the move reminder. Metagross is a great tank and provides a much needed physically offensive and defensive presence on her team. And the final team spot is going to go to Sabrina's Slowbro from her Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee team, which is at level 56. Slowbro is also in the RU tier and gives a great physically defensive presence, with moves like Stab Scald with a chance to burn, Stab Psychic, Calm Mind to level out both its defenses and raise its special attack, Yawn to get the opponent to sleep or to switch, and coverage moves such as Ice Beam and Shadow Ball, Slowbro is a great wall that can also output some damage at the same time, especially with its Regenerator ability which restores a third of its health every time it switches out. Sabrina does have a few other Pokemon that are worthy of mentioning but don't quite make her best team. The first is her level 50 plus Sigilyph which is outclassed by her Espeon in its role. The second is her level 50 plus Slowking which is of course outclassed by Slowbro. And finally, her level 53 Gallade, which could help against opposing Dark types, which are a threat to this team, but it's ultimately too slow and frail to make use of its massive attack. Well, there we go everyone, we have discovered Sabrina's true power and unveiled her strongest possible team in the main series games. If you enjoyed this video and are looking forward to more from the series, please be sure to leave a like, share it on social media, and subscribe with notifications on by hitting that bell icon if you haven't already. All forms of support help a ton with getting these videos recommended by YouTube and are super appreciated. Don't forget to comment down below with what trainer you wish to see featured next. The comment with the most likes will pick the trainer for the next trainer's episode and will be featured on screen. This has been Self Spectre and I'll see you guys next time for some more True Power.